Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. And Cooney's already over it. She's trying already, to go. <laughs> already over it. But she's back. <laughs> oh, there she is. She's trying. She's running away. T.I. Lowe is with us here today to talk about her new release, Indigo Isle. So I'm going to read your bio real quick, and then we'll dive in. T.I. Lowe is an ordinary country girl who loves to tell extraordinary stories. She's the author of nearly 20 published novels, including her recent best-selling and critically acclaimed novel, Under the Magnolias, and her debut breakout, Lulu's Cafe. She lives with her husband and family in coastal South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank y'all for having me. I can sit here and just listen to Narelle talk the whole time. Well, yeah. <laughs> And we could listen to you from that. Yeah. <laughs> you like my twang? <laughs> it's, it's a little different than mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's accent central today. It's exciting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit different. We'll, get, we'll get Valerie to say some about and uh, uh are you making sorry. fun about me? Yeah. <laughs> Can you say sorry? <laughs> I'll probably say sorry about 18 times today. <laughs> Wouldn't be a good Canadian without that. That's right. Um, so uh, rather than reading the back cover of the book, we like to start off by asking authors to tell us about the story um, that you wrote, you know, a year and a half ago. So yeah. <laughs> you know that it's fresh in your mind. <laughs> Is it and is it that's that's the fun thing, right? You're you're yeah. in the middle of writing another book and then <laughs> you have to start talking about a book you, you wrote a year and a half ago. You gotta remember <laughs> it all. <laughs> so so I'll I'll probably stutter around it just a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> well, my next my book is Indigo Isle. Let, let me make sure I get the right yes. one. <laughs> what should we talk about here? Um it's set in uh Charleston, South Carolina. It's off the it's a barrier island off the coast and it's it's made up. It's not you know it's a fictional uh, barrier island, but it's my matchup, my creative southern take on uh, prodigal daughter meets Beauty and the Beast. Ah, uh, okay. And our um, leading lady, Sunny, she's the one that uh, went running away from home a hundred miles an hour in the wrong direction, and fifteen years later, it's come about that she has to go back to near her home in South Carolina. And she stumbles upon this island while doing research for a, a movie she's supposed to be working on. And it is uh, the in, Indigo Isle. And while she's out there, she meets this recluse, which we're going to, his name's Hunter. Uh, no, Hudson. Hudson. See, I told y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Hudson. And Hudson is um, what they call the monster of Indigo. And, um, He's a like he's a recluse. He wants to be left alone, and he's out there farming his indigo. And Sunny keeps showing up and won't leave him alone. And she she's bound, bit determined to make him take these walls down that he is hiding behind. And and in the process of doing that, she's gonna you know he's gonna call her out on her stuff. And um, it, it's a very much a grumpy sunshine kind of deal. And the fun thing about that, I really had fun with his character because I don't know about you, but um, Beauty and the Beast is my favorite um, fairy tale because the hero is imperfect. And I like that about him. And so he keeps butting heads with her throughout the entire book. He keeps his grump in place pretty firmly. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone then, needs their talents. Yeah. <laughs> if it's yeah. just holding on to your grump, well, hey. <laughs> was a talent I maybe I maybe have a new talent that I didn't know about so that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was actually in the flaw column so but now I'm going to recategorize that. <laughs> so. well, that's Cooney's too you know yeah, yeah right it's, it's her she's, she's the grump I don't know who the yeah. sunshine is around here probably the dog the dog honestly you, right? you're the sunshine Valerie <laughs> no wonder they have the moments anyway <laughs> All right. So you touched on it a little bit. It's a good segue into my question, which is the first one today. So um, that Sunny is a location scout for a movie production company. Um, and this was cool because it's not a career that like you you see. There are not thousands of books with location scouts as the heroine or any job. Like 
you know, barista, you see lots of baristas out there, but um, movie location <laughs> scout, not so many. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that. What made you decide, where, where did that come from? Where, what gave you that idea and how did you come on it? And what did you have to do? Cause it felt very real. It felt like, like you had been this in a, you know, former job and like, it was all very, very real. So tell us about how this came about. <laughs> I did a lot of research. Um, I tell people that I go to the University of YouTube. So <laughs> I watched a lot of um, it. Pretty neat. Anything, you know, as a as an author, we have to research whatever we're um, dealing with. Uh, the writer Pat Conroy said one time, and I'm, I'm going to quote him wrong, but um, he said, you, it doesn't have to be real, but it's got to sound like it. So do your research. And I, tr I tried to do so with this. Um, a lot of the prodigal daughter or prodigal son stories, the contemporary, it seems like they're, um, and I like it because I read them, I enjoy them, where they're, the people go off to become celebrities or actors in movies and actresses. And um, I wanted to kind of flip it around a little bit. Like, um, it's not so much the the one, you know, the fame and glory, but the one behind the scenes. Okay. And so I was like, well, you know, she's a prodigal daughter. I got to get her back home. So how am I going to get her back home? And so just looking about the location scout came, it just kind of like fell in place. You know how that goes when you're writing a story and things just start lining up like you didn't. Yeah. Really like, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so <I was> just, <laughs> glad the story worked it out. I weren't too sure on it, but yeah. That's why I decided to do that. Lots it definitely, of it definitely worked. And yeah. and like Beth said, it's not a um, a career that I don't think I've ever seen it before. You know, there's plenty of you know musicians and office workers and retail and waitresses even and chefs <laughs> and and then the more you know highfalutin people. You know, we got our cowboys in that too, right? Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but, well, this was a new one, so it was interesting from that point of view for sure. It was definitely a challenge for me too. So, you know, not, not doing the normal thing that I, I, had, I had no clue about it. So it was fun to learn some, I don't know about you, but the older I get and since I've been writing books, the, the, to me, it's so fun to learn something new. And I'm definitely, I tell my kids all the time, I didn't start writing. I didn't start into the writing world until I was 38. And I said, look, I'm a clear example. You're never too learn, too old to learn. You know, old dogs can learn new tricks. Yeah. Very cool. I'll tell my dog that. Yeah. <laughs> he may not be convinced. Um, <laughs> excellent. All right, Narelle, I think you're I think you're next. I am up. Yeah. So firstly, I just want to tag in something different. Um, I absolutely adored Under the Magnolias. And it's not CCR, but I actually snuck it into an episode we did when we first started Story Chats on mental illness. So if you're interested in knowing anything about Under the Magnolias, go back into our archived episodes and you can go look that one up. Yeah. Okay, now I'll go back to our regular scheduled <laughs> programming. <laughs> I think you've actually mentioned it in three or four because you loved it so much. Yes. She, she does. She finds ways to work it in. So. <laughs> that one, I'm yeah. deep with that one. Mm hmm Yes, I did love that one. So anyway, getting back to what we're talking about, I'm firstly going to uh, share a book quote from the story which sort of sets up my question. So this is from a paragraph. As I watched her slowly walk away, Wit's arm descended until his palm came to rest on my backside. I winced, which should have told him I didn't want his touch, that my body language was not giving his body consent. Instead, it seemed to only make his grip tighten. So when I read this, I sort of went, oh, because I was the 15-year-old, just turned 15-year-old. In my first job, it was in retail, and this situation happened to me. And I objected very loudly, and I used very strong language that I would never use on this podcast. <laughs> and I got fired on the spot. And then I was the, the kid sitting in the car park, sobbing my eyes out when this lovely lady stopped by and said, are you okay? And I told her my story and she was so furious. She said to me, I'm going to go and tell your boss that blah, 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 blah. Like she was really ready to tear strips off him because of what he'd done to this poor teenage girl. So um, Sonny's boss in this story, his name's Wit, and he's the producer. 
And he is a sexual predator who's been controlling Sonny with unreasonable demands and threats to fire her for over a decade. And she's 32 years old and the workplace sexual violence that's been inflicted by Wish started in her early 20s. And Wit thinks that he can just use Sonny's body at any time. And so as a result, Sonny's always on alert. She's trying to avoid being cornered by him. And there's a lot of emotional distress that goes with this situation. So my question is why, if when we get to the start of the story, I'm not going to, because obviously things happen in the story, so we won't go further. But when we start the story, why hasn't Sonny walked away and why does she put up with Wit's, well, quite frankly, disgusting behaviour? Well, one thing leading into it is a lot of women, they, you know, researching the hard parts of this too and really getting into when, you know, when the Me Too movement come out and it has always just, you know, been pressing onto me. Like I wanted to understand it more, how women get themselves in such situations and they don't feel like they can get out. And with her, with Sunny, she almost felt like she deserved it. She had made all these mistakes and then she got into it. But before all that, um, you know, when you're in, in danger, they say there's, all, there's always two choices to make, either fight or flight, but there's a third one. And it, it's they freeze. freeze. Yeah. yeah. And, and I wanted to highlight freeze. She, she never gave him consent. She froze. And that was, you know, that was how, you know, so, and then it, to the point where she froze and it happened and then she froze, it happened again. And then it was like the vicious cycle of him abusing her and just kept up the assault. And she didn't feel like anyone would believe that she didn't want it. And she felt, felt like people would believe that wouldn't believe they would think she did it for her to have her job position. And I know we've seen that in the Hollywood, uh, headlines where you know actresses were doing it but there's a women behind the scenes that's happened to them too and um, I hope I give this book will give um, give a voice to that going on there you know we need to talk more about the freeze yeah. not you know the fight or flight you know there's another response and that's not giving the prey or you know giving the predator permission but um, a lot of times it looks like it Mm. And I found it, yeah, I found it interesting because it was kind of like it was set up as a relationship, but it wasn't a relationship. And I think it just really um, showed the unequal power balance, like how he had so much power over her and could dangle this, I'm going to fire you at any second. And, and make sure no one else hires you. Yes. Like she would have been probably yeah. welcomed being fired if she could go to the next yeah. studio um, down the yeah. road to get a job and i heard yeah. you know, there was actresses that were blacklisted during that time so yeah, yeah. so playing into that too yeah just you know there's reasons why women don't get out of these situations there's reasons why even men in the industry don't get out of these situations because they don't yeah. want to lose their career just like valerie said yeah it's a very um difficult um very difficult situation to write about and to and to balance right because you've got people like Narelle and many others of us who you know have had um inappropriate words possibly touching but possibly just words as well and then and lashed out and yeah may, maybe lost a job or walked away from it or or you know like just never got in deep I guess um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely also the other side where people don't quite know what to do if they don't have a, a good support at that time or a strong sense of self-worth, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it's also context. Like if I was the 15 year old that didn't have a job, I had mum and dad to look after me. I wasn't going to starve. I wasn't going to be homeless if I got fired, like it was as awful as it was to get fired. It wasn't going to be the end of the world. And I picked up a job within a matter of weeks. 
Mm-hmm. So for me, it was an awful experience. It's not the only time I've been sexually harassed. And I think there's probably very few people walking the planet that have never been sexually harassed. Unfortunately, it's something that happens way too often. But I thought it was really interesting how, if because for an actor, they've got usually more money and more resources, whereas she was a location scout. So she was paid well, but she had to live the LA lifestyle. So she didn't have a lot of money and a lot of resources behind her. And I thought that was a really interesting angle to highlight and in the story. having cut off her family. Yeah. 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 yeah she, had when she was 17. Yeah. So yeah. she quit when she's, you know, down, you know, almost penniless and a late teenager, you know, she was probably, I think, 19, I said in the book, yeah, 19 when she met him. And so, you know, she's run away. She didn't have anybody. She was isolated. And, and I think predators, they 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 smell weakness. They smell, they can mm-hmm. a wound. And they prey on it. No, that's very true. Yes. It was very um, realistically portrayed, I think, um, which, which is fantastic, but also, you know, maybe perhaps worth, a, a bit of a trigger warning for people uh you know if you do come from that history you know keep that in mind as you're you know as you're considering reading that there are some uncomfortable moments in here um mm. it's it's a great book but it, there are uncomfortable moments yeah. um there is a satisfying conclusion um but getting <laughs> there getting there is is there are some rough waters <laughs> so um, and, and they're again, not all on the ocean between there and the barrier yeah, island yeah <laughs> but um it was but there, there, there would have to be rough waters yeah yeah because i, if, I don't feel like i would have respected the, the the theme of it if i had glossed over those parts they were they are gritty but um like i said i, I felt like it was necessary to go to a point, if I had just glossed over it, I, I just don't think that would have been respectful for what was going on. So. No, I would agree with that. I th- I mm. think I would agree with that. Um, you you would not have done it justice if if you had not. That's the thing, right? As as authors, when we when we choose um, some background information, for instance, on on a hero or heroine. Um, it ha- it has to matter. I mean, you know, it might not matter, you know, if they're the, you know, second of three kids or what, but it probably does. <laughs> but but things like this, you you can't uh, as authors, you can't just like throw it in there and then it not matter. It um, whatever mm. goes in has to be worked around and and dealt with, mm. and um, so yeah, that that's makes it a challenging job right there. Mm. when that's the character that comes to you walks in and says tell my story and you're like yeah. mm, I don't I don't want to tell your story actually I don't want to go there <laughs> like, this will be hard yeah yeah, like, yeah. sit down let's do it anyway yeah <laughs> sometimes that is definitely what happens mm-hmm. yeah Valerie lighten it up <laughs> <laughs> okay well then um let's talk about indigo um yeah. This is something that I had never really stopped to wonder about. Oh, hello, kitty. Hi. Beautiful. She jumped on the table, so now she's um, on the screen. And now she's very upset. She's not Cooney. You get 10 seconds at the most. (laughs) Anyways, I was fascinated uh, by the process of growing indigo for dye, which is what Hudson does on his little island on the barrier. So which came first, the story idea or the Indigo Island setting? And what interested you in Indigo? Probably the story, it's, it's been with me for a while. I know you as authors get this, there's a story, you know, you have a story and it just sits with you for a while and you're busy doing some other things and it just keeps getting pushed to the side and pushed to the side, but it was always been with me probably for a few years now. But um, Indigo is that was actually a, a prominent export in South Carolina in the late 1800s. So there's a pretty um, deep history of indigo in South Carolina. And right now, I was lucky enough because it had already caught my attention before I read Indigo Girl. And that was the uh, Elizabeth um, Pickney. And, you know, she's the one that um, helped grow indigo in Charleston. Okay, I, I wasn't familiar with that. So yeah, it, I mean, it's, the book was is um, based on on uh, 
on history. Mm -hmm. I stopped stuttering now. Um, <laughs> but um, so it's like a, a, a revitalization is going on or a revival of indigo in South Carolina. So you have artisans that are um, growing it and producing indigo now. So I was able to actually go to a workshop. Um, we started the day in a indigo field which looked like a whole bunch of weeds and then we <laughs> harvested the, the limbs off of it and they were like six and eight foot tall so I'm I'm five foot flat almost and so it was you know picking up all picking the, all these um leaves but then we would pick them off and then we put them in jars and we steeped them like tea and we made our own dye and then that afternoon we ended up dyeing um scarves let's see if I That sounds really interesting. Oh, oh wow. That's gorgeous. That's pretty. Hold, hold it up a little. Hold it up a little. It was, it was such a treat to be able to, you know, because a lot of our research has to be online. You can't, yeah. you're not. Um, oh, gorgeous. that's so. That's really pretty. It is Thank pretty. Yeah. So, so the, the bits of story where where she's helping him with his indigo that's straight out of personal your workshop yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's fantastic yeah I started researching it of course and then um I saw where I could buy dye and and then they started um listing you know how it pops up you, the more you dig into research the more <laughs> And there this was is true. <laughs> available. I said, well, I'm there. I have, I had to go. So, and one thing of it is the, the art, art artisan that, um, put the workshop on wants to do a book event with me. Oh, fun. Wow. Cool. That's oh, cool. Mm -hmm. That's so, very cool. And I assume that you were looking for a, a reason that Hudson could live on an Island and, mm -hmm. and stay living there without, uh, <laughs> coming okay. to shore very often well and that and so I I was interested in indigo and then I started working on the the book and I'm like well what's what's he doing out there and I'm like I can put indigo in there finally <laughs> I, can nice. Nice. <laughs> I found that part really fascinating because um I, I live in a farming community and there's a, a you know a back to the land kind of movement and revival in local foods and all and local dye would certainly fit right in with that. So uh, I really enjoyed that, getting to know a bit about it. Then I did a little yeah. research too, you know, wandered around with <laughs> and a few other sites. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. It really so, is. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking me on a little little yeah. trip back mm -hmm. in history there. Now, I have to tell you, Valerie, so the neat thing of it is, you know, I wanted to put Indigo in it. And then I had this story with um, Sonny. But it was amazing after, you know, I'm, I'm already writing the story, but then I go and I, I do the whole process of indigo where we're, it's a weed. It looks like a weed. I Sunny, saw pictures. Yeah. Sunny felt like she was a weed. She was a nothing. And then, you know, you have to tear these leaves and they're being bruised and they're being torn. But, and then the whole process of this, um, different, you know, it's a brutal journey to, be, you know, become that dye, something beautiful. But at the end, something beautiful comes about it. And it was just amazing how that paralleled with the story. That was God. I mean, mm. I, I didn't do it. It just happened. And I was like, you know, near the end where there's a scene where she's talking about the indigo and how it was. And I'm like, there it goes. So it was. <laughs> I love when that happens. Me too. Me mm. too. It's like all of a sudden, because I'm a pantser, I don't know about you, but I don't know the whole story or even sometimes very much when I get started. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that's what this is all about. I get it. I get it. I love it. Me. I'm like, oh, it, it needed to be indigo. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have been something else. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's cool. That's outstanding. Very, very cool. Um, why don't you tell us what, what's next for you after, after Indigo Isle, what's coming, what's coming next? So I'm, I've just finished with, you know, I had a, a monster on Indigo. I had my beast. So now I'm going to move on to ghosts. I'm going to have. All right. <laughs> it's That's local. logical. Yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> um, it's a ghost town in South Carolina. Okay. It's, it's based on a, a ghost town and my, um, 
leading lady in this book, she is, she's, uh, any of y'all watch any of the home improvement shows, like the fixtures, the flip mm-hmm. show, where they yeah. flip, um, like, um, the fixer uppers and stuff. Well, this yeah. is going to be an entire town. She's going to go in and work with a revitalization project to, um, redo the town. So wow. while she's in this town, you know, um, doing, all this remodeling for the town, it, it's it's going to correlate where there's going to be changes in her life too that she didn't see coming. Cool. So, so is it part of a series? Do you do you generally write in series or are these all kind of standalones? Sometimes I do, but even my series, I, I try to do where they're standalones. Okay. I don't know about you. What I don't, I don't never plan. And I never plan to do a series, but I once I'm in, plan. another character's <laughs> like. I'm like six six (laughs) stories. Okay, who's in them every time? (laughs) And where can people find you? What's your website? Uh, Tilo.com. That's easy. easy, Yeah. Right. And um, all the social medias. My favorite. Well, I think I'm on Instagram the most. Okay. It's it's short and sweet. I can go on there and engage a little bit and see what's going on. I can get back off of it. Yes. I don't know how, but some of the some of the other sites, I'll I get in on, it and then like an hour later, I'm like, I'm supposed to be writing. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. This is the problem. Mm. Yes, but um, yeah, I'm all over the place. You Excellent. can find me. easy perfect. find. Well, um, we are like perfect for time. So um, perfect. So thank you so much for joining us and talking thank about you. Indigo Isle, and um. Little sneak peek. The ghost town sounds kind of cool. I, I like it. It does. Yeah. Sound, I love home improvement. I'm a sucker for, especially like female handyman. Well, handyman like that kind of thing. I'm a sucker for <laughs> that. It so, is. She's yeah. not the designer. She's she's the um, contractor. So nice. That's she gets awesome. her hands dirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. All right, and uh, thank everyone for joining us at Story Chats. We would love to hear from you in the comments on YouTube or on our Facebook page. And you can find information about the podcast at inspiromance.com slash story chats. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And we will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you all for having me. Bye, everyone.